Hello everyone, I'm Ace, one of the developers who works on the AI companions on the vanilla WoW private server Nyctermoon, and this video is a guide where I'll go over what the companions are, what they can be used for, what are the commands you can give them, and how you can control them. This video will have timestamps, so you can easily find the section you are interested in. First of all, the companions are server control characters that you can hire from any of the companion representatives who are usually found at taverns sitting right next to the innkeeper. You can recognize them by the companions tag that's right under their name. The hiring cost scales both with your level and the number of companions that you hire. The more companions you have, the more it will cost you. This was done with the intention of dissuading you from always bringing the maximum number of companions and trivializing the game. This way, you have to decide for each gaming session what sort of help you require and what activities you wish to do. If you plan well and make use of this service efficiently, you will not be using gold. On the contrary, you'll be making much more. The companions you hire will only stay with you for as long as you remain online and if you were to relog, then you'd have to rehire them. The maximum number of companions you can hire is 4. That means you can have a full party which will allow you to run the vast majority of PvE content in the game all by yourself. They are scripted to make the most out of the game system that a player has access to and they reflect what a player character can do, as they are characters themselves, albeit temporary ones. With that being said, they are more than capable of clearing all of the dungeons in the game, and many of us have already cleared each and every one of them numerous times. Because the limit you can hire is 4, that means for a 40-man raid, you'll need to have at least 8 players. There are very good reasons for this limit and the limit itself will never be increased. In some of the clips that I show you, you will see me fighting some raid bosses alone and controlling 39 companions. This is only for demonstration purposes and these clips are from when I was working on the raid logic. Keep in mind that I am still working on their logic and improving it but they are stable and complete enough that I can present them to you. As far as their gear, items and consumables are concerned, they come fully prepared. During the leveling process, the companions will choose their own gear in a way that's relevant but also diverse. They will also bring consumables such as potions, bandages and other useful items such as engineering bombs. It's important to say that I'm trying to make this as lore friendly as possible, meaning that some of the quests or conversations you have with the companions will tell you that some of the gold you paid them is used for the purpose of acquiring gear and consumables. The idea is for the companions to be a lore friendly way of getting you help with your activities that's hands off and stress free for you. As far as you're concerned, they are nothing different than random people you could meet by playing the game and their randomization is meant to reflect that. They are responsible for their own gear, talents, rotation and logic and all that's left for you to decide is how to use them. Once you reach level 60, you will be presented with quests that will help you improve and specialize the companions. While up until that point they had randomized gear, at level 60 their gear is static and you can help them improve it. As such, you can go for different branches for raid and dungeon specs. These quests will grant you licenses, which will allow you to hire better equipped companions. You can choose to go for dungeon or raid licenses or both because they are not mutually exclusive. The licenses are character bound, so it is up to you to determine how much you wish to invest into your character. It's also important to know that the quests are also for your own raid progression. Even though the Nectarmoon server is on the patch 1.12 and all the raids are available, you'll have to complete the raids in the order they were released. 
So both you and your companions will get stronger together. The raid license quests require you to kill the final boss in each raid in order of release. For example, killing Ragnaros in Molten Core will unlock the tier 2 raid license and will grant you access to Blackwing Lair. Killing Nefarian in Blackwing Lair will unlock the tier 3 raid license and so on. With each new license you unlock, you will not only gain access to the next raid, but you'll also gain the possibility of hiring even stronger companions. When you want to hire some help, the license with the highest tier in your inventory bag will determine what sort of companions you get. So it's important to keep these licenses safely stashed away, preferably in your bank, and only bring the ones you intend to use. Higher tiers of companions, even though they are stronger, will also cost more to hire, so it's a good idea to bring the appropriate tier for each situation. One more thing to mention is how to revive dead companions. If you wiped inside a dungeon and you revive outside, then the companions will automatically revive themselves and teleport to you. If you walked back to the dungeon to retrieve your corpse, then it's the same thing. However, if you die in the open world, then you'll have to be in close proximity to them and out of combat to revive them. If you have a healer in your group, then the healer will have to be revived first. And even if you don't do anything, they will still self-revive after about 5 minutes or so. Alright, that was the general information about the companions. Now let's talk about how to control them. But before that, you should know that on the Nyctermoon website there is a list of commands explaining what each of them does if you need a text representation of what I'm about to show you. Of course, links in the description. Okay, so let's say that you are a fresh level 1 character starting on the server. What do you do? Well, generally speaking, you have to go to a tavern to hire companions but we have also added some representatives in the starting zones so you can get started right away. You will always be able to see the hiring cost when talking to a representative and like I said before, the cost will change based on how many companions you've already hired, your level and the license that you have. But licenses only come into play at level 60. Right now you need one copper to hire your first companion. Since you start with no money whatsoever, you have two options. Either you can sell the food from your inventory that you start with, or you go and kill a bunch of mobs and make some money. Now, for the hiring process, you have a couple of options. You can hire companions by role, which is the fastest way, or you can take your time to customize them just the way you want. If you wish to customize them, then you can choose their class, role, race, and gender. On the other hand, if you choose to hire them by role, they will instead be granted a random valid class, race, and gender. Be aware that in the late game, choosing their race could be important to you, because different races have different racial abilities and the companions make use of them, such as priest dwarves who cast Fear Word. This is one way to hire companions. Another way would be to use our Companions Control Panel add-on. You can set up a keybind for it to make it easier to open and close. With the use of the add-on, we can hire them in the same way as when talking to the representative. You can either customize them by using the different sliders, or you can directly just hire one by role. Do know that once you have four companions, you won't be able to hire any more. If you speak with the representative, he will also tell you this. Even if you use the add-on to hire companions, you must still be within 10 yards of the representative. However, there is one type that you can summon from anywhere you are in the world free of charge, and that's a clone. You can either clone yourself or another player of the same level or lower as you. The clone only lasts for 5 minutes and it has a 10 minute cooldown, and it will disappear even sooner if it gets killed. This is only meant to be used as an emergency option in a pinch. Now, 
The third way to hire a companion is to use the add command. You can pass a couple of arguments to it, such as add warrior DPS. You can read about the syntax on the website. I personally prefer to use the add-on, but you could make some macros to help you hire companions quicker. So if you know you'll always want a warrior DPS night elf female, then perhaps creating such a macro is useful for you. Okay, so now that we have our companions, what do? How do we make them to kill stuff? Well, there are numerous ways to get the companions to attack. Let's start with the very basics and work our way up. Perhaps the simplest way is to just run into a bunch of angry mobs and get attacked yourself. In that case, the companions will see that you're in trouble and they will try to defend you. The tank will try to establish aggro, the healer will heal the group and the DPS will try to kill enemies as quickly as possible. In future videos, I will go over in detail about how their logic works and what exactly each class and role are trying to do. Alright, so while this method of getting things done might work for most easy situations, generally speaking, you want to avoid body pulling yourself just to stay out of danger. Therefore, another method of attacking is by right-clicking an enemy. What happens when you do this is that the companions think that you are giving them an attack order and they will engage in combat. You should always be aware of this function. While generally speaking, this will make it fast to send them to engage, you might also accidentally right-click some enemy and you won't understand what's happening when they just rush off to attack. In that case, there are a few commands to recall them by your side and I'll present them to you soon. This is basically all you need to know about controlling the companions. The majority of time when questing or doing some easier content that you think you can handle, this is all it takes. So you just attack like you normally would and they will use their own logic to figure out how to win encounters. Now, everything else that follows in this video will be methods of giving you even more control over them to allow you to achieve more complex tactics and to win more difficult encounters that are sometimes necessary in dungeons and raids. So let's talk about commands. Again, the list of commands with their description is also on the website. There are three ways to give commands. First, you can type it in the chat and I normally don't use this. Secondly, you can make a macro for it. So you can put the chat command in a macro and then use that macro. It is very useful to make macros for the most important commands that you'll be using the vast majority of time. This will make it easy and fast for you to control them, assuming that you also assign those macros to key slots and you don't actually click buttons. And thirdly, you can use the Companions Control Panel add-on and click the commands that you want to use. This is lower than macros, but it's useful for some rare commands that I don't use very often. The most basic command you can give to your companions is Start. This will send them to attack whatever enemy you have selected. So isn't this the same as just right-clicking an enemy? Well, yes, it does share the same functionality, but in addition, you can also use it to force them to change targets. So let's say they are attacking the training dummy on the left. How do you get them to attack the one on the right? If you simply right click the other dummy, you'll notice they don't change the target. But let's say that the left dummy were to die, then once again, they would go attack whatever you have right clicked on. So whenever they have to decide what to attack, they look at what you are attacking and they will come to assist. But during their attack, they don't check over and over. So they'll keep attacking the same target until either it dies or until you tell them differently. If you type start, then you'll notice how now they're attacking the right dummy. This way you can switch attack targets over and over by using this command. This is one of the most important ones, and it's very useful and a good idea to make a macro for it. 
it has some other functionality aside from this, which I'll explain to you later. Also, you should know that only tanks and DPS can attack and are affected by attack commands. Healers don't attack, at least not directly, and are not affected by attack commands. Alright, so we know how to tell the companions to attack. But how do we tell them to stop attacking? For that we have to use stop. This will force them to stop entirely and just become passive. What is passive? Passive means they won't attack anymore. Even if you have attackers, they will simply refuse to strike back. But in addition to this, they will also use instant cast abilities, such as heals, shields, healing potions, and disengage abilities like vanish or feign death, just to escape their attackers. This command is also useful when you want to make them not engage in combat when you just want to rush past some enemies. Normally, if you were mounted and you got attacked, then the companions would dismount and start to defend you. This can be inconvenient, so instead if you just use stop, they will ignore the enemies and simply follow you. If they get dismounted, then they will try to stay alive and come to your position, eventually mounting back up when they're out of combat. But if you use stop to make them passive, then how do you make them active again? Then you have to use start, which will make them active. So you see, there's a synergy between using start and stop, which is why it's important to have macros for both of them, because you'll be using them frequently. Another very important command is come. This will force the companions to come to your location. Do know that this is usually something that you have to spam a lot, because they have the tendency to go back to whatever they were doing before you told them to come. This command is also useful for getting them to jump over obstacles. The companions have a creature movement type, and that means they don't move like players, they move like NPCs, and therefore they don't know how to jump. So, if you were to jump over some balcony, then they would try to find a way around and respect the architecture. There are many times, especially in dungeons, where you don't want them to do this and just come to you directly. This is one of those times when you'll be using this command a lot. And it's one of those that it's very important to have a macro for because how much you have to spam it. Okay, so now a little bit more advanced, it can also receive some arguments to specify if only certain roles or classes should respond. This is more of a rare case use but it can be very useful in dungeons and raids. Let's say that you send the tank in to charge the boss and you want to tell the rest of the companions to come to your location so you can position them where they're supposed to be. Okay, so focus on this for a second. In the add-on interface, you will see a selector for the different roles and classes and a checkbox. The checkbox is inclusion exclusion. That means if you have tanks selected and the box is unchecked, everyone except the tanks will come to your location. Inversely, if the tanks are selected and the box is checked, then only the tanks will come to you. But, like I said, this is the occasional use in raids and it's not particularly common to need this outside of them. The next command that is also very important is come stay. It's actually a conjunction between the come and stay commands. This makes the companions rooted at your location. It has diverse applications, like using it for corner pulls or just making sure that they are not moving from their designated spot. While they are rooted, they will continue to use their abilities and attack enemies in proximity, except that they won't be able to move. To make them move again, you can either give them the start or come commands. Probably my most used command in dungeons is pull. This sends the tanks to attack and it pauses all the DPS. The default pause duration is 10 seconds and it can be ended prematurely by using start. You can pass a different duration as an argument if you need something specific. 
Do know that each time you use this command, the duration is reset, not added. So you can use a pull multiple times until you are comfortable with how much aggro the tanks have generated and then give the start command to send the DPS into attack. Now, the best tactic that you can use to help you clear the majority of content in the game is corner pulling. You make all but the tank stay behind that corner, out of line of sight of the enemy, then you send the tank into pull and you bring him back to the party behind the corner. This groups all of the enemies together and it ensures that only a control amount of them come your way. The way to achieve this is by using come stay followed by pull. After the tank has pulled aggro, use come stay again to bring the tank back to your location. When the enemies are close, give the start command. This strategy is incredibly powerful and it reduces the chance that you wipe inside the dungeon dramatically. If you master this, then you'll have a very good time playing with the companions. I highly recommend you have macros for all of these commands. Alright, now let's talk about one of the strongest tools of control and that is Raid Marks. Raid Marks make the companions focused on their assigned mark and ignore everything else. That means tanks will only tank their target and they won't try to establish aggro on any other enemy. Healers will only heal their target and ignore everyone else. And of course DPS will only focus their target. This is incredibly powerful and even though it is primarily used in raids it can also be useful outside of them as well. The way you assign raid marks is by using the focus mark command but I recommend that you use the add-on instead. By default, the companions have a raid marks assigned. Tanks have the cross raid mark, healers have star and DPS have skull. During a raid, you will have to adjust these marks depending on the boss you are fighting. Back when I described the start command, I told you that it's a way to force companions to change their target. Well, raid marks are another way to accomplish this. Whomever you set their assigned mark on, they will immediately drop everything else and focus on that target. The best way to show you this is the Major Domo fight in Molten Core, where you assign different tanks to different elites and you can use another command which is CC mark on the healer elites. Companions will try to cast CC or crowd control on the targets who have the CC raid mark such as mages will try to use polymorph on set targets. By default, all the companions have moon as their CC mark. Another example is to have the main tank focus on the boss with a raid mark, while any additional tanks that you may have don't have a raid mark and they are left to acquire and hold aggro on their own if there are any adds in the fight. Understanding how the focus and CC marks work is quintessential for raiding, but I often use them outside of raids as well. For instance, what if I want only the DPS to change target, but not the tanks? I can't use start because that would cause both the tanks and the DPS to change target. So using raid marks provides the solution. Another command that you will occasionally need is use. This makes the companions use a game object in your proximity. This is very good for making them use altars, like the one in Oldaman or UBRS, and it's a good way of making rogues open locked doors and chests for you. And since we're on this topic, rogues can open locked doors, chests, and you can also trade them lock boxes and they will send the contents back to you. Maybe it's also good to mention that mages will trade you water and food and warlocks will trade you health stones. A cool feature is that you can change the role of a companion with set. This is especially useful for classes like druids which can perform multiple roles. If you have a bunch of cats in the raid, you can change them into bears since they use similar gear and talents 
and it's just like having a bunch of off tanks on demand. Okay, so we saw how to add companions to your group, but how do you kick them out? Well, if you're the group leader, then you can simply uninvite them or you can leave the group yourself. Alternatively, you can use the remove command for those situations when you're not the leader. Okay, I think this pretty much covers the important commands. There are a few more, but I don't think it's necessary to show you all of them. You can read more about the rest on the website or just experiment using the add-on. This is the general knowledge about the companions. If I have missed something or you have questions, then ask and I will answer them in the comments or in future videos. Like I said before, I want to do more videos with dungeon running and raids and I'll talk more about different aspects of their logic and how they work. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.